Hello everyone, welcome to Explore Electronics. In this video, let's understand what is conditional branching and what are the different if-else conditions we have. So we will look into if statement, if-else statement, nested if-else statement and cascaded if-else statements. So let us understand what is conditional branching. Consider a real life scenario in which to unlock a phone, we require a fingerprint. So whenever we are attempting to unlock the phone, we will give our fingerprint and the system will check whether the fingerprint entered is matching or not. So here uh, it is checking for this condition and based on the conditions evaluation, that means if the fingerprint is matching, then the phone will be unlocked. Else we will get an error message saying the fingerprint doesn't match. So this is a scenario where the conditional branching is taking place. You can see here this is the condition and this are the two branches which will be executed based on the condition. So if the condition is matching, it will come over here and unlock the phone. And if the condition is not matching, then we'll, it will display an error message. So this is what the conditional branching means. Now let us understand what are the various ways in which we can achieve this conditional branching in our programming. Let us understand what is if statement. Here you can see the syntax. We have if, this is a keyword that we use. And inside if we are writing an expression, that is the condition which we want to check. And if this condition is satisfied, what statement or what statements we need to execute will be writing inside the flower brackets. And after coming out of this if statement, what is the statement that we need to execute will be written here. So here is a flowchart. Here you can see we have an expression. And if this expression evaluates to true, that means if whatever we are checking that condition is true, then the statement one which is written inside this if will be executed. If it is not uh, satisfying the condition, if the condition, if the expression is evaluating to false, then what happens? Statement 1 will not be executed. So it directly comes to statement 2. Why it comes to statement 2 is because it is written outside this if condition. Let us take a small example and understand this. So here we have a program to, to check the larger number. So here we, uh, we can see we have two variables a and b whose value we have assigned as 20 and 11. Now we need to check whether a is greater than b. Okay, so we are writing that condition inside if and checking if a is greater than b. Now, as you can see, in our case, a is 20 and b is 11. So, a is greater than b. So, this condition is satisfied and it will come inside this and it will execute this statement, whatever we have written here. So, what we are doing in this statement, we, are, we have given printf a is bigger and value is whatever value a is having that we are writing here. So, it is taking the value of a and printing it here. So, after coming out of this if statement, it is also executing this. We saw this. After coming out of the if statement, whatever statements we are going to write, that will be executed as it is. So, we will get job over. You can observe the output here. It is printing a is bigger and the value is 20. And it is also printing job over. Now, let us understand what is if else statement. So, unlike if statement, here in if else statement, we also have the else condition. So if this particular condition, what we are checking in if is not satisfied, then what we need to execute will be written in else block. So here you can observe the flowchart. Here we have an expression and we are checking if it is true or false. If this expression is true, then the statement one, whichever written inside that will be executed. If it is false, then statement one will not be executed, but it will execute statement two. And after all this, it will come out of this block and execute the statement 3 as it is. So the statement 3 will be executed irrespective of the expression's evaluation. Even if it is false or true, based on that, uh, the statement 2 and 1 will be executed. But ultimately at the end, statement 3 which is written outside this block will be executed. So here is an, here is an example in which we have two variables a and b whose values are 10 and 11. In this program, what we are checking if A is greater than B or not, right? In the previous example, we just checked if A is greater than B. If it was A greater than B and it's satisfied, it was printing A is greater than B. But here we are checking if A is bigger or B is bigger, right? We are checking for two conditions. So how to do that is by using if else condition. So in if we are checking if A is greater than B, then we are printing if A is bigger. If A is not greater than B, then that means B is greater than A, correct? In that condition, what we are printing, B is bigger value. 
so according to this program we have 10 and 11 as a and b so b is greater than a that's why we, the output will be b is bigger and the value is 11 now we have something called nested if else statement in this case what happens uh, we can write if else statement inside another if, if condition so first we have if and if the condition is evaluating to true we are coming inside and we have another if else statement which we will execute inside this if that is why it is called nested if else statement so having if else inside if else is called nested if else statement so here we can observe the flowchart we have an expression which we are checking if it is true or false so if the expression is true it will uh, come inside and we uh, again have if statement here which is checking for some expression 2 and it will evaluate and execute the statements whichever we have given and if the condition is false and it will go to another expression called 3 so that we have written in else if condition so it will not execute this whole portion if this expression 1 is false correct it will come to the else if condition and check for expression 3 now if the expression 3 evaluates true then statement 3 will be executed else statement 4 will be executed so let's take a simple example and understand this so here we have a scenario in which we are checking which is the largest number of the given three numbers so in this case what we can do first we need to compare two numbers so what we'll do we will compare if a is greater than b if a is greater than b then we are entering and we need to check again if a is greater than c or not so to conclude if the a is greater number we need to compare it with both b and c so first step is to compare with b and if it is greater only then you need to compare with c only then you need to compare a with c correct so if a is greater than b then we will go inside and check if a is greater than c or not so in this case what happens a is 20 and b is 15 so this condition is satisfied a is greater than b so it will come inside and check if a is greater than c so in our case we have 20 which is greater than 3 this is also satisfied so our output will be the largest is equal to a suppose a was not 20 suppose a was 5 correct in this case what happens this condition is not satisfied a is 5 and b is 15 so 5 is not greater than 15 it is less than 15 so it will not enter here so it will not execute this complete block instead it will go to else block so in else block again we are checking if b is greater than c so in our case what b is 15 and c is 3 and this condition is satisfied so b is greater than c now what it will execute the statement whichever we have written inside this if so it will be printing the largest is b even if this condition is not satisfied uh, just consider a as 1 b as 2 and c as 3 in this case both our first and uh, second condition is not satisfied so it will come to the else part and it is obviously known that c is greater than all the other numbers so it will print largest of all the numbers is c now let us understand what is else if ladder or we call it as cascaded if else statement in this in this else if ladder we will have an if condition and we'll have multiple conditions which we can write at else if so if we have suppose three conditions to check okay then what we can do we can check for the first condition in if block and if that condition is not satisfying we can check for the other condition in else if again if we have one more condition we can check that in again one more else if and finally we can check for the else so uh, this is the flowchart of this else if ladder first we will have an expression and check if it is true or false if it is uh, this will be false and this will be true so if it is true then statement one will be executed then it will not go to this uh, else if both else if will not be considered at all so it will directly go to the next statement as we can observe here right if the condition is false suppose the first expression expression one is false in that case what happens it will check for expression two here also it will check if it is false or true now if suppose the expression two is true then statement three and next statement will be executed suppose the expression two is false then this statement three will not be executed instead it will go and check for the other expression which we have in our case here we have something expression 3 
and this expression 3 if it is satisfying then statement 3 will be executed and next statement will be executed. If this also is not satisfied then at the end it will come to the else. So else if all these expressions evaluates false and the else condition will be executed that is statement 4 and the next statement will be executed. So in this way we can have multiple expressions and we can check each of them one by one based on the condition if else if else if and finally else. Let's take an example and understand this too. So uh, here we have a program in which we are asking the user whether the user needs to perform addition or subtraction or multiplication or division. So we are giving the user option to enter uh, 1 for addition and 2 for subtraction, 3 for multiplication and 4 for modulus division. So we have two uh, variables a and b whose value we have assigned as 100 and 5. And we also have one more uh, variable we have declared it as choice. So this is the variable where we are getting the user choice. So first in the printf statement we are asking the user to enter 1 for addition, 2 for subtraction, 3 for multiplication, 4 for division. Now the user will enter any of these numbers. So that number we need to read it into this variable called choice. So that's why we are using scanf and reading that number into this variable. Now we need to check if the entered number is 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or not in this list. Okay. So first we will check if it is 1. If it is 1 we need to perform addition. So in the printf statement we are printing sum is equal to and here the value will be we are adding both a and b and the result will be displayed. Else if so in else if we are checking if the choice or the user entered value is 2. So if it is 2 then what it will do it will print the difference. Again if the user entered value is not 2 it will check in the another else if condition if, if it is 3. So if the user entered value is 3 then it will print the product which is a into b. If the user has not entered 3 also then it will check another else if condition. So in, in else if condition it was checking if it is 4. If it is 4 then the remainder that is the division will be performed and it will display the remainder. If the user has not entered 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 if it is any other number than these 4 then it will go to the else condition and it will say that it is an invalid option. So this is how we can use the if else ladder and write the program. Thank you.